Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about one of the questions of interview preparation marathon contest by Prepbytes. This week, the contest was on logic building. So basically in interview preparation marathon, what we do is that there's a weekly contest based on a particular topic. Last week, since we had logic building, we will be discussing questions around that. So in case you have already participated, that's great. You can see how the question was solved. In case you haven't, do not worry. You can solve past questions from here on and you can participate in upcoming contests here. So make sure you just do participate going ahead. Let's just go ahead and see the question. Before that, if you want to check the schedule of the complete marathon, you can check it from here. Let's just go ahead. So this was the contest. So we are going to talk about the third problem. Two problems we have already talked about. So let's just go ahead. So as you can see, since this was a past contest, it has moved to practice problem. So let's just go ahead. So let's see first what is the question. We'll try and understand the question and then we'll try and come up with a logic and then we'll try and write the code. Okay. So this is a very interesting problem. Let's see what it is. The question says, find the total area covered by two rectilinear rectangles in a 2D plane. So basically, these are the normal rectangles that's there in a 2D plane. Each rectangle is defined by its bottom left corner and top right corner as shown in the figure. Assume that the total area is never beyond the maximum possible value of int. Okay. So I'll repeat it. What it says, we have to find the total area covered by two rectangles in a 2D plane. Each rectangle is defined by its bottom left corner. So let's say if this is my rectangle, we are going to get this particular coordinate and top right corner, basically this one coordinate. Okay. Assume that the total area is never beyond the maximum possible value of int. Okay. So they have given the figure. Let's see the figure. So let's try and understand the example. So as you can see, we have minus four zero here. We have two comma four here, six three here, zero minus two here. So we know that area of rectangle is nothing but length into breadth. So first thing that we need to do is we need to find the length and breadth of both the rectangles. So in this case, this is going to be the length and this is going to be the breadth. So now how do I find the length of this particular rectangle? If you will see the length will go as follow. So this is the x coordinate and for this point, the x coordinate is going to be this particular coordinate. So for this point, x coordinate is 2, which is this. This is the x coordinate for this point and y coordinate is going to be the same, which is there for this particular point, right? So for this case, y coordinate is going to be 0. So basically, if we see the length is going to be 2 minus minus 4. So why are we taking this minus? So let's say if this would have been my x and this would have been my another x. So my length will be this minus this. Similarly, since this is the negative number, this will eventually give me the right answer. So basically the length in this particular case is going to be 6. Okay. Now what is the breadth? So for breadth again, we'll find the y coordinate of this particular point. So the x coordinate for this point remains the same, which is minus 4. And the y coordinate for this point is going to be 4. So now the y coordinate is 0 here, 4 here. So here the breadth is going to be 4. So if I calculate the area of this particular rectangle, it is going to be 24. Okay, 6 into 4. For this particular case, let's say this is my x coordinate. For this, the coordinates are going to be 0. Sorry, it's going to be 6 comma minus 2. 6 comes from this particular x coordinate and y coordinate remains the same. Similarly here, it's going to be the x coordinate remains the same, which is 0. And the y coordinate is this particular one. It's going to be 3. So now if we see the length, it's going to be 6 minus 0, 6. If we see the breadth, it's going to be minus 2, 3 minus minus 2, which is 5. So this will give me 30. Okay. So now I get that both the rectangles are combined having area of 54. Now there is a problem that this part of the rectangle is kind of overlapping, right? So whatever area we have calculated, we have to calculate this area just once, okay? So we have calculated this twice. So what we need to do is we need to calculate this part of the area and we have to subtract it from 54. So let's calculate area of this particular rectangle. So this coordinate is going to be 0 comma 0. This coordinate is going to be x remains 0 and y becomes this one which is 3 okay and this particular case 
what is going to be my x? x is going to be 2. Okay. In vertical line, x remains the same. y changes. In horizontal line, y remains the same. x keeps on changing. So here will also be the x coordinate 2. Here also it will be 2. Okay. And what is going to be my y? y is going to be this, which is 3. Okay. And we know that this particular point is 2 comma 0. So if we calculate the area of this particular rectangle, the length is 2 and what is the breadth? Breadth is going to be 3. So now the area becomes 6. So we simply do 54 minus 6 which gives us 48, right? Which is my answer. So this is something that we have understood the question, right? And if you must have seen, it required me so much of calculation just to understand the question. I did all the things. I understood the x coordinates. I understood the y coordinates. I saw how I'm, you know, trying to just, first I tried to put the coordinates at the places where I don't have it. I went to the basics. You know, in all of this, there is no too much complicated thing required. There are just basics required. There's a basic length into breadth thing and 2D plane coordinate thing. Okay. So now this is something that we have seen. And one thing we know is that if we have to calculate the area of two rectangles, it is not simply going to be just addition of two areas. We also have to see that there might be some area that is going to be overlapping. So we also have to find out that whether the area is getting overlapped or not. And if it is getting overlapped, then in that particular case, how will I find out uh, the length and breadth of the common rectangle? So just try this particular scene, just try just try and draw three, four more test cases. Try and find the pattern in case of overlapping and non-overlapping. And then you will be able to do it. And then we will try in some, and no worries, in any case you're not able to do it. We will try and solve it together, okay? Okay, so I have seen, so we have seen what is the question and we have already solved a test case. Now let's just try and solve it. If we have to find area of ABCD, right? How we will find area of ABCD is going to be, we have to find this particular length and this is the breadth, okay? So this is going to be C minus A mod C minus A into, this is going to be the height or breadth. This is going to be B minus D mod B minus D. Similarly, area EFGH is going to be, this is G, right? G minus E into F minus H mod f minus h okay this is going to be my area of abcd and efgh now we have to find out this particular point right so these i already know so the first thing that i need to know is that whether there is an overlap or not okay so i have taken two test cases so first i'll just try and come up with the logic using this and then i'll just see that whether the logic is working with this as well okay so now let's say what we have to find it that whether this particular area there is an area that is overlapping or not so for us to know that there is an overlapping area or not, we know that if that there is an X overlapping and Y overlapping. So basically, let's say in this particular case, some part of this particular rectangle, X of this particular rectangle and this particular rectangle is overlapping, right? Which is this particular part and Y of both the rectangles are, are also overlapping. Now, let's say there would have been a situation where the X is overlapping, but Y is not overlapping. Okay, then also there is no common area or there is Y overlapping, but no X is overlapping. Then also there is no co common area, right? So both the things has to overlap. Now we have to find out, now we have to know how do we find whether there is an overlapping or not. Let's just first focus on X. So basically this is my X and this is my X. I just have to find out that is there any common area between them, right? So let's say if this is the x and this is the x okay so now if i see let's say this is my start one and this is my end one this is my start two and this is my end two so if you see that this end one is greater than this start two okay this situation i see is that this end one is greater than start two right so i can say they are overlapping if there would have been situation like this then there is no overlap, right? So in this case, what will happen is that start two is greater than end one. Okay, there is no overlapping. So one situation I know is that if start two is greater than end one, there's overlapping. Let's take another scenario. 
so let's say this is start two this is end two this is start one and this is end one so in this case what is happening is that start one is less than end two so basically what is happening is that end two is greater than start one same thing okay so in either case one of the starts so as you can see in both the cases of overlap the start is less than the end of one of the cases right so in both the cases the line might be different but the situation remains the same that start of one of the line is less than end of one of the lines now again there is a situation here so let's say this is the start and this is the end if you compare these two this will not give you the right answer right so if you compare let's say that the start one is greater than end two then this won't be give this won't be giving you the right answer so you should know that i have to check which particular start with which particular end because in this case i can see that there is an overlap so i am comparing this start with this end and not this start with this end similarly in this case i am comparing this so how do i know that which start to compare okay so if you see that in both the cases in both the cases what is happening is that this is the end and this is the end and this is the start this is the start so let's say if this is x axis let's say if this is x axis okay so as you can see that the start that is coming later or basically the start that is having greater value is overlapping with the end that is having the minimum value in both the cases the start that is having maximum of the two value is overlapping with the end that is of minimum value so we have to do is that what we have to do is that we have to check that if there is any start that is less than end okay and if there is there are two starts and we, i don't know which is going where so i just have to check that so max of start 1 start 1 should be less than min of start 1 sorry comma start 2 should be less than min of end 1 comma end 2 so in this particular case of x axis what are the x axis or basically what's going to be the start and mid so the start is going to be a as well as e so we have to check that max of a comma e should be less than min of this is one end point and this is one end point so it's going to be c comma g c comma g right so if this case is true which means that there is an overlap okay similar is the case in this particular case only also so let's say if this is ab this is cd this is ef this is let's say gh okay so in this case again what is happening is that the start of what is the minimum of both the starts this a comma b sorry what is the maximum of both the starts this a comma b and e comma f maximum of both maximum is going to be e right this is the maximum point which we can see is the overlapping point and if we see this particular point then this is going to be the minimum of c comma g which is this particular point and this particular point so we see that this works for this particular case also similar thing exactly similar thing goes for y as well in same thing happens in y we will see that if max of what is the y here so in this case y is going to be b in this case it's going to be f should be less than min of let's see what are the end points it's this is one end point which is d comma another end point is h right so if both of these situations are true then this tells me that there is an overlap if any one of this is not true which means there is no overlap so now i know the area now i know the that there is overlap or not now we have to find out the area let's see how we are going to do that now let's try it and find the area of this particular common point so let's see what is this particular coordinate okay so this particular coordinate is going to be e comma b and what is this particular coordinate this particular coordinate is going to be c comma h right so basically we see that which so ever is the maximum x maximum starting x which so ever is the maximum starting x is going to be the left corner of this so basically in this particular case what was e e was the max of 
a comma e right max of a comma e and what was my c c was min of c comma g so basically this gives me the length of this particular small area and what is going to be the breadth it's going to be max of b comma f minus min of d comma h okay this gives me length this gives me breadth so basically the area is going to be this obviously we'll have modulus into this this gives me the area so what is going to be the final area so let's say this is area overlap so my final area is going to be area abcd plus area efgh minus area overlap okay so basically the code is going to be simple let's see what are going to we are going to do we are going to find area abcd using this particular formula then we find area efgh using this particular formula then we find if there is x overlap or not and there is y overlap or not if there is we find area overlap using this formula and at the end we find the required area using this formula so this is how it's going to be let's just see a code where we have put everything together and see if this works fine so now this is the code i have already taken the input and output i'm just using the function compute area to compute the area so this is going to be my input a b c d e f g h so i'm calculating the area of a b c d using this particular formula which we have already seen here i calculate the area of efgh the second rectangle i check here that whether x is overlapping or not i check here whether y is overlapping or not and then i have area overlap which will calculate the overlap area which is calculated over here i check if x overlap and y overlap then i calculate this and at the end i simply return area of abcd efgh minus area of overlap so this is my code let's see if this code works fine or not so let's just submit our code so as you can see we get right answer over here so though this code in c++ but you can easily write this code in c and java the only thing that will change is the syntax to take the input and the syntax to change the output in case of java we will have a class and obviously the header files and the packages will be changing so Make sure you try this code on your own and submit it as well.